I'm just going to come out and say it. You're cheating, aren't you? I finally said it. Mike's eyes widened in shock, but after a moment of thought. With his eyebrows furrowed, he grinned. So it finally came out, huh? Well, yeah, I've been pretty free. Without any sign of remorse, Mike continued. Oh, I have something to tell you too. He strode up to me with a lewd smile and said. Take care of the kid with the incurable disease, will you? <laughs> what? He's attached to you. Make him happy, okay? That's the least you can do for me. In return, I'm moving on to someone new. If Kate and I have a boy, he'll be the future president of the company. In short, Mike plans to have a child with Kate, the president's daughter. Indeed, this would secure his future, combining the power of lineage. Such a pathetic, dependent thought. Just then, the door banged open, and in came Jim. He moved adeptly in his wheelchair, approaching Mike. Suddenly, he stood up and exclaimed. Mom, it's time to fight back. I am Sophia Thompson, 30 years old. I became a full-time housewife after getting married, but now I'm troubled about my child. Though I say my child, there's no blood relation. He is Mike's son from his previous marriage. He's a quiet kid. Mike brought the child the day after we registered our marriage. I knew Mike was divorced, but I had no idea he had a child, let alone one he was raising. I don't know what to say. I was bewildered, but Mike replied without any guilt. No, really, he's so calm. He's three years old and not troublesome at all. Looking at the three-year-old child, he gazed back at me curiously. His innocent face stirred indescribable feelings within me. His name is Jim. Say hi to your new mom, Jim. Encouraged by Mike, Jim looked up and bowed slightly. Mom. Yeah, it's a surprise, but that's how it is. Take care of him. I am weak-willed, as embarrassing as it is to admit. If Jim hadn't been there, maybe I could have protested. But I couldn't say a word against Mike with Jim's big, curious eyes on me. So, I became a mother to a three-year-old as soon as I got married. I had wanted children eventually, but never imagined I'd become a mother so suddenly. True to Mike's words, Jim was a very good kid. He ate whatever was given and never threw tantrums. A well-behaved child indeed. He really is well-behaved. Mike said, right? Well, I don't know much about it. What? Before marrying me, Mike's parents were raising Jim. I'm too busy with work to raise a kid, right? Is that so? But now that you're here, Sophia, and you're unemployed, it's all good. Childcare was left entirely to the in-laws, and Mike only saw Jim on weekends. This is why the in-laws were overly grateful. We're getting old, and though he's adorable, it's been tough. Having Jim around disrupts our plans. Plans? You know, kids get sick suddenly, and it's hard to deal with the noise and all. As my in-laws nodded like they had endured much, Jim watched expressionlessly. Despite his illness, he didn't seem like the type to cause trouble. But I was naive to think so. At first, he was probably cautious around me, the stranger in his life. That's why he was so well behaved. No, that's dangerous. Stop. Yay! Cheese. A three-year-old is more active than I expected. He drag a step stool to rummage through the fridge, fiddle with the stove, and play in the bathwater, splashing everywhere. Today he drew on the wall with a permanent marker. I reported this to Mike when he returned from work, exhausted. He reacted as if it was none of his business, saying, Oh, really? I never knew childcare would be this hard. Could you watch him this weekend? I need to catch up on some housework. I could barely manage the day's chores because I couldn't take my eyes off Jim. It's been half a year since I moved into this house after our marriage. 
and there are still unpacked boxes. If Mike could watch him, I could focus on those. But his response was shocking. What? Why should I? But, you're Jim's. What? You're giving up on childcare because Jim isn't related to you by blood? I was speechless. Me, giving up on childcare? No one said that. I only asked for help on weekends so I could get some housework done that I can't do otherwise. I'm just asking you to spend a little time with Jim. You know, that's just impossible. Mike sighed heavily and said. You've got to be kidding. You're unemployed, right? I'm the one working. How can you say such stupid things when you're being supported? But you could help a little, at least on your days off. That's the point. It's my day off. Looking after a kid is just another job. Why do you think I married you in the first place? What's that supposed to mean? You married me just to have someone to look after the child? Mike clearly realized he had slipped up. Though he apologized afterward, he only played with Jim for about an hour on Saturday morning. By the time I noticed, Mike had already gone out. Really? What a headache. As I exhaled with exhaustion, Jim gripped my little finger tightly. Mom, are you tired? Are you okay? Jim asked this with his chubby cheeks and a tilted head. Just a little. But I'm okay. Seeing you gives me energy. As I said this and hugged him tightly, Jim let out a Yay! and laughed heartily. Every day, it's tough doing household chores and looking after Jim. I'm tired. But I had come to love Jim like my own child. That's when it happened. One day, I noticed something off about Jim's gait, so I took him to the pediatrician. Hoping it was just my overconcern, we went for a checkup. But the doctor's words were shocking. If this continues, there's a possibility he won't be able to walk. Jim might have a serious illness. My mind went blank as the doctor explained. I wanted to consult Mike immediately, but he was at work and unreachable. Mike didn't return until late at night. What's with all these calls during work? It's a hassle getting so many messages when I'm busy. This is why being unemployed is. Mike sighed ostentatiously, clueless about the situation. Tears welled up in my eyes. Today at the hospital with Jim. I said this with a trembling voice, and Mike covered his mouth in shock. What? The prognosis varies from person to person, so nothing's certain yet. But the doctor said there's a possibility he won't be able to walk again. He's hospitalized for tests. Please, come with me for the next appointment. I asked, feeling unable to handle it alone. Mike's presence would be reassuring. Despite his busy work schedule, it was an emergency. He should be able to take some leave. But Mike just shook his head. I don't know anything about it. What? A serious illness? No way my kid is defective. Defective? How can you say such a thing? I was trembling with anger. Mike frowned at me. It must be the fault of his mother before you. Her bad genes. Damn it, pushing this on me. I couldn't understand what he was saying. Mike didn't seem to care about Jim, just making excuses. Damn it. I shouldn't have taken him in. Sophia, you're his mother now, right? You take care of it. I'm busy. He left for the changing room, and I stared at his retreating back, stunned. Mixed feelings of worry and resolve filled me. Since that day, Mike started coming home even later. Was it because he couldn't face reality, or was he just escaping the trouble? I thought the latter. I decided not to expect anything from Mike. I had to protect Jim. Mom. Jim. Good morning. I missed you. Fortunately, thanks to Mike, I was a full-time housewife. I had the time. That was something to be grateful for.
A week later, Jim was discharged from the hospital. Mike came to pick him up on discharge day, maintaining appearances. Thank you for everything. From now on, our family will work together. Please support us. The father, who didn't know his son's condition and was running from reality, had the nerve to say that. I thanked everyone again, then got into the car with Jim and Mike. After discharge, Jim had to use a wheelchair. Watching him unable to run around and looking bored every day was heartbreaking. Mike continued to come home late. That's it. To cheer him up, I gave Jim a drawing set. I used to like drawing, and I was pretty good at it. Wow, Jim, you're good at drawing too. Really? Like mom? Pleased with the praise, or maybe happy to share something with me. Jim's eyes sparkled as he immersed himself in drawing. For years flew by, and Jim turned seven. Life in a wheelchair seemed hard, but he appeared to enjoy school, which was a relief. I tried to discuss things with Mike multiple times, but it felt like he was avoiding me. And we never had a proper conversation. My worries intensified until one day, I discovered Mike's affair. A friend suddenly informed me about it. Sorry for the sudden message. But I saw your husband coming out of a hotel with a young woman. Along with the message, my friend sent several pictures through the messaging app. Come to think of it, Mike hadn't come home since the day before yesterday. I hadn't thought much of it, assuming he was on a business trip. As I continued to exchange messages with my friend, it was clear they were being very considerate. Soon after, my friend called me. Sophia, are you okay? Should I come over? I could hear the worry in my friend's voice. It's understandable. They must have struggled with the decision to tell me. But to my friend's concern, I wasn't as shocked as I should have been. In fact, I had suspected something was off with Mike. His workplace wasn't known for excessive overtime, yet recently. He had been coming home late every night. Sometimes, he would return in the early morning. Also, Mike and I slept in separate bedrooms. But I had heard him chatting happily on the phone at night on several occasions. Surprisingly, I'm okay. This gives me the upper hand in a divorce. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Yes, thank you. After hanging up, I was suddenly overwhelmed with despair. Realizing that what was once a gray area is now undoubtedly true makes you feel like this. A dark feeling swirled inside me. More than being shocked about the affair. I was shocked that Mike was enjoying his freedom while I was struggling alone. While I was grappling with my worries and crying over Jim's condition. Mike was happily spending time with another woman. Thinking about this brought tears of a different kind. Jim is so dear and loved. With that comes endless responsibility and pressure every day. Trying not to let my struggles show, I've been keeping up appearances. And this is the result. Such a betrayal. What should I do now? Pretend I don't know and continue living like this? Or confront the affair and go for a divorce? Which would be better for Jim? The more I thought, the more overwhelmed I felt, and tears streamed down my face. My vision blurred. Maybe that's why I didn't notice Jim entering the room. Mom. Are you crying? Oh. Ah. Jim, this is nothing. Is it someone? Did dad do something to you? Why would you think that? I've always been careful not to badmouth Mike in front of Jim or vent any frustrations. Because dad doesn't like me, right? So, I thought he must have done something to you, mom. And... I didn't tell you, but I saw dad on a date with another woman. They looked happy. I saw them once. Jim said this, looking down. I hugged him tightly, realizing he'd been carrying these thoughts. This isn't just my problem anymore. I need to face it head on. Do you like dad, Jim? Jim hesitated a bit before answering timidly. I like mom. I see. 
mom loves you very much too. From that moment, I began to take steps toward divorce. I hired a private investigator and started gathering evidence against the affair to strengthen my case. Everything was prepared smoothly. I decided to confront Mike the day he returned. It seemed he had come home a few times, but I never encountered him. His belongings and bank books were still at the house, so he had to return eventually. That would be the time for our conversation. I thought I had made up my mind, but sometimes, I felt uncertain. Is this really the right thing to do? I no longer have any love for Mike. I'm sure I won't regret divorcing him. But when I think about Jim, doubts arise. There's no blood relation between me and Jim. That fact bothered me. I planned to take custody after the divorce, and I couldn't imagine Mike objecting. But still, isn't it better to have a father, even in name only? Mike often left the house to escape, and now, he hadn't returned for days. Yet, as long as he doesn't initiate a divorce, it won't happen. If we remain silent, life will continue like this. At least, we won't have financial worries. That's a big blessing. These thoughts surfaced in my mind. Mom. Sensing my hesitation, Jim tightly grasped my hand. It's okay. I'm here with you. Despite being only seven, his reassuring words made me smile. Yes, let's be strong together, okay? Yes. Two days later, in the middle of the night, Mike returned home temporarily. We need to talk. The next day, when Mike woke up before noon, I initiated the conversation. What? Talk about what? It's probably something annoying, right? I just got back, give me a break. Mike yawned widely. I took a deep breath and looked at him squarely. I'm going to be direct. You're having an affair, aren't you? Mike's eyes widened in shock, but after a moment of thought, he smirked. So it's finally out, huh? Yeah, I've been pretty free. So you admit it. Yeah, and by the looks of it, you're planning to divorce me, right? If you have the divorce papers, bring them out. I'll sign them right away. I didn't expect him to cling, but neither did I anticipate him admitting so readily. Surprised by my reaction, Mike's smile grew wider thought I'd be more upset, huh? Yes, I didn't expect you to admit it so easily. Well, I'm at ease now. My current soulmate is. The president's daughter? Wow, you've done your homework. Impressive, Sophia. Mike clapped his hands exaggeratedly, feigning surprise. Yeah, we met through work. She's a so-called president's daughter and even said she'd pay any compensation to be with me. I wondered if he was trying to escape, but I refrained from pressing further. Is that so? That's convenient for us. By the way, I need to confirm something. Oh, I also have something I want to tell you. He walked up to me with a sly smile and said. Good luck taking care of the sick brat. <laughs> what? He's attached to you. Take care of him. That's the least you can do for me. In return, I'm moving on to someone new. If Kate and I have a boy, he'll be the future president. So, Mike intends to have a child with Kate, the president's daughter. Indeed, this would secure his future. What a pathetic, dependent thought. Just then, the door banged open, and there was Jim. He moved adeptly in his wheelchair, approaching Mike. And then, to everyone's surprise, he stood up and exclaimed. Mom, it's time to fight back. Mike was shocked to see Jim standing, his mouth hanging open. Jim, you. I thought you couldn't walk. Why are you standing? I worked hard. Indeed, Jim, once thought never to walk again, had diligently done his rehabilitation and could now take a few steps on his own. Well, good for you? Mike tried to sound nonchalant. Yes, 
Thanks to that, he's been growing wonderfully. He even helped me prepare for this divorce. You don't have to tell a kid that. Mike seemed surprised that a child was involved. He was slightly flustered. A good negative example. Fine. I have the president's daughter with me. You and your defective child can do whatever. By the way, which president's daughter is Kate? Mike chuckled. Prepare to be amazed. Kate is the daughter of Johnson Construction's president. Johnson Construction is one of the biggest companies around here. It's understandable why he would be so proud. However, Mike was making a big mistake, unaware of the truth. Unknowingly, Mike puffed out his chest, looking smug. I feigned ignorance and asked. Johnson Construction. That's impressive. I'm shocked. Right. Nodding, Mike looked pleased with himself. I smiled and told him. I never knew your preference was that way. I'm sorry for not realizing it before. What? Confused, Mike looked bewildered. I continued. That you're not interested in women, but in men. What? Kate is a girl. That's strange. There's no daughter in the Johnson construction family. That can't be. You're lying. Just wait and see. Despite his bravado, Mike seemed panicked. He took out his phone and started calling someone, shaking. It was Kate. Mike kindly switched the call to speakerphone, making the entire conversation audible. Hey, Kate. I just heard something unbelievable. Sorry to ask something weird, but you're a girl, right? Mike asked nervously. Kate responded nonchalantly. Oh dear, it's finally out. What? Mike's face lost all color, turning pale. That's a lie. But, that time, there wasn't anything, right? He was trying to ask something about a certain body part. Despite having a physical relationship, he couldn't believe that the person was male. Kate responded to this calmly. Well, of course. I've already had the surgery. I'm a girl, body and soul. Oh, but I haven't changed my legal gender yet. My dad's been hesitant about it. Unfazed by the revelation of her past as a male, Kate seemed unbothered. Meanwhile, Mike paled even further and collapsed to his knees. No way. Kate was a man? Hey. That's rude, Mike. I am a girl, in body and mind. Mike shouted into the phone, shut up. Don't spout nonsense. A real man pretending to be a woman. The living room fell into an eerie silence. I wondered if Kate was shocked on the other end of the phone. But soon realized it wasn't necessary to worry. Huh? Mike, you're unbelievable. You said you loved me, you big liar. I'm done with you. Forget about introducing you to my dad or the headhunting offer. Goodbye. What? Wait, Kate. That's, wait. Kate cut off the call abruptly. Mike remained kneeling, utterly dumbstruck. He had anticipated a rosy future with the president's daughter. Only to find out that Kate was the president's son. And had now abruptly broken up with him due to his careless words. Moreover, as a married man who had indulged in affairs, Mike still had responsibilities to fulfill. That's unfortunate. But it's your fault. She was a girl, in body and mind. No way. No matter what she is now, if she was born a man, she's a man. Oh, it's disgusting. I was with someone like that. I don't care how you feel. More importantly, how do you plan to pay the compensation? Mike muttered softly, oh, and his eyes darted back and forth. His lifeline, Kate, had just coldly abandoned him. Despite it being winter, sweat formed on his forehead, trickling down his face. Don't think you can get away without paying. 
I'll make sure you pay the compensation and child support. But I... I have no savings. I spent almost everything on Kate and now I'm broke. What does that have to do with the compensation you owe us? Mike looked worried, his eyes darting around. He remained seated, making no attempt to stand up. But then, as if struck by an idea, he blurted out. Compensation is just temporary. Continuous support would be better, right? What? I glared at him, frowning, and Mike looked up at me with a pleading gaze. You're a kind-hearted person, Sophia. You were going to take Jim anyway after divorcing me, right? But think about it, you're unemployed, without savings. Life isn't that easy. And your point is? Let's get back together. Mike nodded earnestly. Yeah, that's the only way. If we do, we can continue living as before. It's a win-win situation. Let's just call it even this time. Ah, uh, I see. Could you just keep jokes to yourself? What? Mike's smile turned into a grimace as I pointed at him. What do you mean? Why am I being blamed? You're the one who cheated and squandered the savings, not me. Don't trivialize this. But you're a housewife without any significant qualifications. You won't find a job easily. Wouldn't it be better to get back together with me? No need to worry, I've already found a job. Mike looked dumbfounded. Thanks to Jim. What do you mean? My drawing videos are super popular. Jim, excitedly showing Mike the tablet. Displayed were a young hand and a pleasant voice, along with warm drawings. When Jim was three and his illness was discovered, he couldn't play active games. Wanting to provide some enjoyment, I introduced him to drawing. A pastime I loved as a child. I was often praised for my skill, but Jim surpassed me. His drawings weren't just skillful, they were unique and full of character. Most importantly, he looked truly happy while drawing. Wanting to share this joy, I casually filmed him and uploaded it to social media. Making sure his face wasn't visible. A celebrity noticed and shared it, and Jim's drawing videos quickly spread. Recently, we started earning from advertisements. My video editing skills, initially just a hobby, improved with daily practice. Now, I even take on editing jobs for others. Jim's drawing videos are just a hobby. If he wants to stop, we will. But I plan to study more and take on more editing work. I'll get more clients that way. So, you don't need to worry about us. Why didn't you tell me Jim was making so much money? If I had known, I would have. Knowing you. You'd get dazzled by money and make Jim do things he shouldn't. That's what I couldn't stand. That must have hit a nerve. Mike clenched his back teeth, glaring at me resentfully. Besides, when I talked to my parents about it, they supported me too. Even without your help, I have plenty of people I can rely on. But, but... Mike staggered to his feet and grabbed Jim's shoulder. Jim, you want to live with Dad, right? The real family is with Dad, right? Right? Jim stared into Mike's eyes for a moment. Then slowly shook his head and gently removed Mike's hand from his shoulder. I'm fine with just Mom. She's always been there to help me. When I was scared and couldn't sleep, when I had bad times, and good times. Mom was always there to listen. But Jim, you and Sophia are not related by blood. Your real family is me. And you ran away when I was in pain? And you call yourself a father? Mike recoiled under Jim's steady gaze. Jim. But, I. I care about you. You've been annoying since a while ago. Besides, I'm already in elementary school. I don't call you a dad anymore. I call mom a mother, you know? You don't know even that, and you say you're my father? Jim, but... 
You should have just stayed happy with Kate. Even if she was a man, it's rare to find someone who would like you. Rejected so outrightly, Mike had no ground to stand on. He finally seemed to accept defeat, his shoulders slumping. Knowing he could turn on the charm to gain sympathy at any moment. Both Jim and I firmly refused and left the house. From now on, please communicate through the lawyer. I said this as my final word to Mike, who offered no reply. Knowing that Jim was earning money, Mike predictably refused to back down from the divorce. Jim is my precious son. We share blood. Why should we live apart? That's just wrong. Despite his previous lack of interest, he desperately tried to gain custody of Jim. Surprisingly, it was my in-laws who convinced him otherwise. Listen here, we heard from Jim. You hardly cared for him, left him with Sophia, and cheated elsewhere. After all that, how dare you claim any rights? Exactly. Raising a child is not as easy as you think. The responsibility, the constant vigilance, and it's every day. You dumped all that on Sophia, and now you're struggling in hindsight. That's disgraceful. I had been mistaken. I thought Jim was unwelcome by my in-laws. But they had been trying their best to raise him, despite the physical and mental toll. Jim also said, even if they divorce, I want to see grandma and grandpa again. After several attempts by my in-laws to persuade him, Mike finally agreed to the divorce. Of course, I demanded compensation. Though he appeared to have no savings. We discovered a secret account he had been squirreling money away in. Thankfully, we received the full amount of compensation from that account. As for child support, my in-laws said they would ensure Mike's responsibility. Later, after Kate reported him to the president of Johnson Construction, Mike became the target of scrutiny at work. He eventually resigned and is now making ends meet through part-time jobs. Jim and I are living happily. He still loves drawing, and his enjoyment is truly adorable. He continues his rehabilitation for his body. Although it's slow, there's steady improvement. We're being careful not to overdo it. As for my video editing work, I'd say it's within manageable limits. But actually, my dream has changed. I enrolled in a vocational school to become a physical therapist. The inspiration was simple. I admired the therapists who supported Jim's efforts. Someday, I hope to help children like Jim. Recently, people say Jim and I look alike. Even though we're not blood-related, Jim shyly remarks, and I cherish him all the more. As a mother, I vow to support him until the day he's ready to leave the nest. It's a day I both anticipate and dread with mixed feelings. Don't come to your sister's wedding. Upon hearing my mother's words, I was terribly shocked. Why can't I, her sister, attend? No matter how much I asked for the reason, she wouldn't tell me. Just don't come, she insisted stubbornly. Feeling something suspicious about my mother's emphasis. I secretly went to the wedding venue on the day of my sister's wedding to peek inside. Then, I saw an unexpected person sitting next to my sister, who was in a wedding dress. It was at that moment I finally understood why my mother had said such things. Jessica Hansen thought, I see, that's how it is. Muttering bitterly in my mind, I resolved to turn their happy married life into a hell they deserved. I am Jessica Hansen, a 30-year-old office worker. I've been married to Kevin, who is three years older than me for five years. His father is a wealthy businessman who runs several companies. And Kevin was in charge of one of the subsidiaries. His work has been very busy, especially in the last two years. And he hardly comes home half the week. Despite this, the business hasn't been doing well, and our income has decreased. Especially since last year, it's almost like working for free. The only way to secure the salaries of the employees is to reduce my share as a manager. He said painfully, leaving me no choice but to agree. 
Fortunately, I was doing quite well in a large corporation, so I was able to support our livelihood. But still, I was worried about Kevin, who was overworked, and I felt lonely too. Still, it was a happier life compared to when I lived with my parents. My mother was a spendthrift and always short on money. And she only doted on my younger sister, Stacy, who is seven years younger than me. Stacy, who was spoiled being the only one, always looked down on me. I was able to keep a good distance from those two after marrying Kevin. It made me feel much more at ease. Around our fifth wedding anniversary, I was surprised to hear about Stacy's sudden marriage. My fiancé is handsome and very capable. He's perfect for me. She said this proudly, telling me the date and venue of the wedding. But it wasn't to invite me as family. It seemed more like she just wanted to brag about how big the venue was. And how many people she was inviting. I don't plan to invite you, sister. It's embarrassing to have a plain and unfashionable woman as a sister. I was confused because I had attended my sister's wedding. And it seemed natural for a sister to celebrate her sibling's marriage. We weren't exactly close, but I couldn't accept it right away. But if the main person, Stacy, didn't invite me, I couldn't attend. I seriously wondered if all I could do was send a congratulatory telegram. That's when I received a call from my mother. You must absolutely not come to the wedding. Understand. I was terribly shocked by her words, emphasizing the point. Considering my mother's vanity. I thought she wouldn't like it if the real sister was absent in front of other guests. And would force me to attend. I thought she would at least say, make sure you attend and give a generous gift. So I was more surprised than when Stacy told me not to come and I couldn't easily back down. But won't everyone think it's strange if I'm not there? Humph, that's none of your concern. Why are you so adamant about not wanting me there? It didn't seem like it was just because Stacy didn't want me there. Or was my mother willing to indulge Stacy's whims to this extent? She didn't even talk about the gift money she usually insists on and just kept repeating. Just don't come. That's why I thought, there must be something going on. So, on the day of the wedding, I secretly went to the reception venue. In the midst of the reception, while everyone was distracted, I quietly peeked inside. Then, next to my sister, sat an unimaginable person. No way. This can't be happening. I was thrown into utter confusion. Because there, in the seat where the groom should have been, was Kevin. He was supposed to be on a long business trip starting today. But now that he was here, it meant that the trip was a lie. I gently closed the door I was peeking through. What's going on? I can't make heads or tails of this. The only thing I understood was that, somehow. My sister Stacy's husband was my own husband, Kevin. It made sense why I didn't know Stacy had a boyfriend until the wedding talk. If the person was Kevin. Reflecting back, her boasting about her partner being perfect for her. Probably meant she found herself more suited for Kevin than me. Stacy had been bragging about a luxurious honeymoon. So Kevin was supposed to go on a two-week trip abroad with her. His claim of a long business trip was undoubtedly a cover for this. Realizing this, I understood why Kevin had been coming home less often recently. Not because of work, but due to his affair with Stacy. So, mom told me not to come to the wedding to hide this. Though my mother always favored Stacy. I was shocked to think that she would go to the extent of arranging a marriage like this. At the same time, I felt anger and disgust towards Stacy for stealing my husband. And towards Kevin for betraying his wife with her sister. I quietly returned home without causing a scene at the reception. But I had no intention of letting this go. It's too frustrating to let those two comfortably live the married life they've schemed for. Jessica Hansen thought, now, what should I do? While pondering various methods of revenge, a question crossed my mind. Surely some of the attendees knew that Kevin and I were married. 
How did they explain that? As I was deep in thought, my father-in-law called. Looking at the clock, the reception must have just ended. I assumed he was contacting me, wondering why the bride's sister was absent, but I didn't think you would come. It must be awkward at your ex-husband's wedding. Ex-husband? What do you mean? To my surprise, he explained that Kevin had been telling people that my wife left me last year. Though I only heard from Kevin that you two had split up. My father-in-law had always treated me like his own daughter. Kevin probably couldn't badmouth me too harshly to him. But he had told his friends and colleagues that the divorce was my fault. According to him, I was a spendthrift who cheated and finally left him with a divorce paper. As a result, the marriage appeared to the invited guests as the sister supporting her brother-in-law wounded by his own sister, leading to their marriage. I heard this story as how the bride and groom met at the reception. But I couldn't believe you would do such a thing. That's why I wanted to hear the truth from you. I explained everything to my father-in-law, feeling grateful that he believed me. After talking to him and having a good night's rest, I felt somewhat calmer the next morning. First, I need evidence that those two can't talk their way out of. Fortunately, or rather unfortunately, Kevin is currently on his honeymoon. Pretending it's a business trip. I decided to gather as much evidence as possible before he returns. In the meantime, I checked my family register at the city office. To my astonishment, it turned out that I was never officially married in the first place. I then remembered the moment we were supposed to submit our marriage registration. Jessica is busy on weekdays, right? I have a flexible schedule, so I'll submit it but they accept it on weekends or evenings, too. Let's go together. No, then my schedule might not match. Just leave it to me. I had trusted Kevin's words and handed him the completed marriage registration form. But it seems he never submitted it and just discarded it. Yet, Kevin didn't hesitate to dip into our supposed shared assets. Kevin had clearly been using our shared finances. In my investigations, I discovered that the $40,000 I had been saving for our retirement had been embezzled without my knowledge, making me believe we were married while behind my back. He was having an affair with my sister and even took money. This realization reignited my anger. Meanwhile, the evidence against those two steadily piled up. I reaffirmed my goal, I'll give them a hellish married life they deserve. On the day Kevin and Stacy returned from their trip, I went to the station with my father-in-law to greet them. I asked my father-in-law to stay hidden while I greeted them alone. Noticing me, Kevin's face showed a moment of shock before remembering Stacy beside him. And his expression turned to one of alarm. Ah, uh. it's not what it looks like. I just happened to meet Stacy there. It was really a business trip. I see. Is that how you've been deceiving Jessica all this time? What? Dad, why are you here? Kevin was taken aback seeing my father-in-law suddenly emerge from behind a pillar. I glared at my sister, standing dumbfounded next to him. Stacy, come with us to the house. Oh, and I've called mom over too. Seemingly frightened by my assertive tone, Stacy quietly complied. My mother, who I had called earlier, arrived at our house. And I began to speak calmly in front of everyone. First off, I know everything about you, Kevin and Stacy. Kevin, you started staying away from home two years ago, saying you were busy with work. But it was because you were dating Stacy, right? That is. And from last year. You stopped contributing to our household because you got engaged to Stacy, right? You didn't want to use our living expenses for the wedding costs? Also, you withdrew all the savings I had accumulated. Ah. Uh. So, that was found out too. Though he looked disgruntled, he admitted it easily, which was somewhat anticlimactic. Probably because, having married Stacy, 
he had no intention of living with me any longer. He might have thought it was pointless to make excuses if it was all going to come out anyway. So what? Don't make a fuss, you income bragging old lady. If that's what you think, why did you marry me? Oh, it was just a de facto marriage, actually. Because you earn a high salary. I thought if we acted like we were married, you'd handle the living expenses. Kevin, smirking without a hint of remorse, was completely ridiculing me. So, you never filed the marriage certificate because you never loved me at all. Yeah, I didn't want to tarnish my family register with someone like you. My suitable marriage partner is only a young and pretty girl like Stacy. Following Kevin's gaze towards Stacy, I saw her smirking just like him. You must be so jealous, sister. Marrying Kevin makes me a company president's wife. Someone ugly like you would never find such a good catch again. Hey, don't say that. Compared to Stacy, most women don't stand a chance. Even at this point, these two showed no remorse for deceiving me or spreading lies about the divorce being my fault. And my mother, she just watched them with a smile. Not only I but also my father-in-law was trembling with anger, but they seemed oblivious. I decided to dampen their newlywed spirits. Kevin, Stacy, I will be claiming damages from you both. Including the savings Kevin embezzled, at least $60,000 from the two of you. Huh? We weren't actually married, remember? Can't claim compensation from a single guy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Though, but you can claim damages for infidelity in a de facto marriage, you know? Huh. That was the first time Kevin showed any sign of being shaken. However, Stacy, who should also be liable for damages, still seemed unfazed. What? Kevin will be fine, right? He's the president, after all. You'll cover my share too, won't you? Hearing this, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Hey, what's so funny? No, it's just. Do you think being a president automatically means being rich? Huh? What do you mean? A business owner doesn't get protection under the labor laws. So they're the first to feel the pinch when business isn't going well. Kevin stopped contributing to our household for Stacy. But the excuse of business difficulties he used was actually true. The subsidiary Kevin managed was the smallest. And its profits had been decreasing since he took over. My father-in-law had been watching the situation. And was feeling it was time to merge it with another subsidiary. So, in reality, as a rising star in a big corporation, I was the one earning more. And I had always been the main breadwinner, not Kevin. Also, Kevin, you're in debt, aren't you? How did you know that? Stacy was bragging about the lavish wedding and luxurious honeymoon. But the savings you withdrew from my account wouldn't cover all that, right? You had to borrow money. So, Kevin was in a tough spot. Not just with paying for Stacy, but even struggling to cover his own damages. As Kevin reluctantly nodded, both Stacy and my mother turned pale. No way. Is Kevin actually poor? I thought I'd live a life of luxury as a company president's wife. Exactly. You promised to take care of my debts too when you married Stacy. Did you lie? Apparently, my mother had agreed to Stacy's marriage for the money. No, it's not a lie. I'll inherit my father's fortune eventually. Then I can pay off the debts and damages. I was speechless in disbelief. Kevin was counting on his father's inheritance. Even though my father-in-law was still in his fifties and healthy. Unlike me, my father-in-law didn't just stand there in dismay. You. After all you've done to Jessica. You still don't take responsibility and instead rely on someone else's wealth. I won't let someone like you inherit anything. The three of them were stunned by my father-in-law's fury. Especially Kevin, who had been counting on his father's assets, looked even more distressed. Wait, Jessica. 
You're kind, you'll help me, right? The damages are just a joke, right? We're a couple. You were the one who didn't file the marriage certificate. Besides, your wife is Stacy. It would be sad to get confused, wouldn't it? But, after five years together, you can't just abandon me. Mother and Stacy also clung to me, saying, but we're family. Even as they cried and pleaded, I couldn't bring myself to forgive them. And my resolve was evident to the three, who eventually slumped in defeat. After that, the two who were supposed to have a happy life became overworked trying to pay off Kevin's debts and the damages to me. Far from a sweet married life, they were constantly fighting. My mother, too, had to work multiple jobs, day and night, even as she approached 60, to pay off her own debts. As for me, living alone, I was enjoying a comfortable life, using my earnings solely for myself. I occasionally kept in touch with my father-in-law, living my life at my own pace. I am Ashley, a 27-year-old office worker. I just got married six months ago. I met my husband Steve at a barbecue party hosted by a couple who were colleagues at work. At that party, a colleague had invited female friends from the office. And her boyfriend gathered his friends from his student days. Looking back, it seems that it was arranged as an opportunity to meet people. My family is quite strict my father being the president of a company. We had a curfew until I was in high school. I had never been to a mixer and felt awkward in places where there were lots of people or men. On that day, I was mostly talking to my female colleagues when Steve first approached me. Ashley, the meat is ready over here. You haven't eaten much, have you? Don't be shy, here you go. He had such an easygoing manner that made it easy to talk to him, and we quickly hit it off. Thanks to his ability to enliven the atmosphere. I found myself naturally joining the group and the day flew by enjoyably. The next day after he asked for my contact information, I received a message saying. Yesterday was fun. I'd like to meet you alone next time. When I bravely replied. Me too. He called right away, saying. Really? I'm so happy. When should we meet? Where do you want to go? My heart fluttered with excitement. When he asked me to be his girlfriend after our first date. I was so happy that I immediately said yes. After several dates, one day he drove me home. When we reached my house, he seemed surprised. I heard at the barbecue that you were from a well-to-do family. But this is an amazing place. Is your father the president of a company? Yes, kind of. Do you know the Bradley Group? Bradley. Of course, I know it. Everyone does. Wow, so you are the daughter of such a big company's president. I'm not really a daughter of a president type. I wonder if I'm good enough to be with someone like you. If you have a fiancé, please tell me sooner. He was serious when he said that. What are you talking about? I don't have anyone like that. And I want to marry someone I love. I have a brother and a younger brother, so I'm not going to take over the family business. Really? Really? Our relationship continued smoothly even after he knew about my family background. About a year later, he proposed, and after introducing him to my parents, we got married. He's been kind even after marriage. About a month ago, my mother Sophia called to say that my father John was not feeling well and was going for a checkup. At that time, we didn't know the test results yet. My father was saying, Sorry to worry you. I'm just tired from being busy lately with a smile. But that weekend, we were called to gather at my parents' house. My brother's family, me and my husband, and my unmarried younger brother. It had been since our wedding that we all gathered like this. A bad feeling crossed my mind, and sadly, it was correct. 
my father had cancer that had metastasized and it was too late for surgery. I was surprised. They told me the test results would be in a week, but actually. They called me the next day. I received a prognosis of my remaining life. My father talked bravely, and my mother was trying to hold back tears beside him. That's so. I couldn't stop crying, and my husband gently put his hand on my shoulder. My brother and younger brother also looked incredulous and were at a loss for words. But I'm not dying tomorrow. There are many things I must do, both for the house and as the head of the company. I need your help. This seemed mainly directed at my brother. And Steve. My father addressed my husband, who was comforting me. I'm sorry to burden you with this, especially since you're newlyweds. Please take good care of Ashley. Of course, John. I'll do anything I can. Just let me know. Hearing their words, I cried again. My father chose to receive palliative care at home instead of being hospitalized. Fortunately, the medication worked well, and for a while. He was able to move around more than being in bed, as my mother said. It's hard to believe he's seriously ill. My father, with the help of his secretary, executives, and lawyer, proceeded to handle what needed to be done. My mother was devoted, and my brothers supported my father both personally and professionally. My older brother, who is the heir, had built a house near our parents' house after getting married. And my unmarried younger brother still lived at home. I tried to visit my parents' house as often as possible after work. And always rushed there on weekends. My husband also came with me on weekends and on weekdays when I went to my parents' house. He would tell me not to bother cooking dinner. I was grateful for his support. One day, when I returned home after visiting my parents. My husband was already home and I heard him talking in the living room. Maybe a phone call? I quietly entered the living room. So, probably soon. He won't last much longer. I thought I heard that and my heart pounded. What was that? What does it mean? Ah. Uh. Surprised to see me, my husband quickly hung up the phone. Oh, you're back. Welcome home. I'm home. Hey, who were you talking to? What about? You weren't talking about my dad, were you? What are you talking about? Of course not. I was talking to a friend about a game. Remember, that gamer guy? But I heard something about, not lasting much longer. He's in a gaming tournament. He's having a tough time. The opponent's items are running out, and it's getting risky. I see. Sorry, I really got shocked thinking you were talking about my dad. Ashley. My husband gently grabbed my shoulder. I'd be sad to be misunderstood like that. I'm worried about your father too. And I'm still wondering if there's any way to cure him, he said with a serious face. Right, I'm sorry, Steve. You're always so kind. I guess I was feeling down after visiting my dad. I haven't had much appetite lately. I see. Sorry, I can't do much to ease your pain. But it's not good to always look so down. Maybe you should go out for coffee with your friends sometimes. Yeah, you're right. I felt relieved by his demeanor and felt sorry for doubting such a kind man. Then, a month later, despite our family's wishes, my father passed away. It was a relief that my mother, brother, younger brother, and I were able to say our final goodbyes. One thing after another kept us busy, which was a distraction from our grief. From the wake to the funeral. And the company transitioning to a new system with my brother as president. There was no end to the things that needed to be done. There was little opposition to my brother's appointment as a young president. As he had already been working closely with the senior staff my father trusted. It's reassuring to have so many people supporting us, my mother said. 
His personality and the way my father had always cherished the company. And its employees played a role. The next weekend, our family gathered under the guidance of our legal advisor. The meeting was mainly about the inheritance. And it was announced that the three children would receive equal shares. The amount was about $3 million. I noticed my husband gasp next to me. I too was surprised by the amount, and while I was grateful. I wished more than anything that my father could have lived longer. The meeting also covered company shares and properties and was adjourned to be continued later. Exhausted from the difficult discussions, I told my husband. I'm going to rest a bit and headed for the bedroom. Yeah, take your time. About the inheritance, since no one objected. I guess that's final, right? I guess so, why? Just, it's a larger amount than I expected. Kind of overwhelming. Yeah, I was surprised too. Saying that, I went into the bedroom and lay down, feeling uneasy about his words. More than expected? As I lay there thinking, I must have dozed off. Waking up, I quietly headed to the living room. Seriously, seriously. Three million. No doubt about it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I've worked so hard for. Oh. Oh, she's up. I have to hang up now. Bye. Who was that? I asked him, trying to control my agitation. Oh, my mom. She was worried about how you are doing. Getting a bit better? I see. Um, and she said she'd like to come over this weekend. There's a new cake shop, and she wants you to try it. Okay, I'll bring some nice coffee then. I smiled and he nodded happily. But I had growing suspicions. The day before my mother-in-law Julia was due to visit, I stopped by my parents' house. Mom, how are you? Have you settled down a bit? Yes, you don't need to come over so much. Becky often visits and worries about me. Are you eating properly? Becky is my brother's wife, modest yet strong, and compassionate. She devotedly cared for my father and supported my mother during the funeral. I'm glad my brother married such a good person. Yes, I'm fine, but actually, I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it, dear? There's something bothering me. I began to share my concerns about my husband while sipping the coffee my mother had made. Then, on Saturday, Julia arrived. She had attended my father's wake and funeral, and this was our first meeting since then. Ashley, it's really a pity about your father. I brought some delicious cake, hoping it might cheer you up a bit. Thank you for your help during that time. Let me make some coffee. Oh, thank you. As the three of us ate cake, my husband broached the topic. So, about the inheritance. Yes? Could you transfer the three million to my mother's account? What? I was stunned by the completely unexpected request. I don't understand what you mean. It's a lot of money, you must feel uneasy having it, right? You're part of our family now, so I think it's best to transfer it to my parents' account. What? I didn't understand at all. Are you saying you need to borrow some for something expensive, like a car? Ha! 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 Borrow? It's our money now, part of my family's wealth. He suddenly started laughing. My family's wealth? Of course, our family, the one you married into. Your money is our money now. She continued with a smile. I'll manage it properly for you. You can ask for money when you need it, but you have your salary, so you'll be fine, right? Wait a minute, I don't understand. If it's our money as a couple, that's one thing, but why does it become your money, Julia? Because that's how it is, it's our money now. And naturally, it includes my mom too. What? What are you saying? Ah, uh, 
Don't worry, your family too. First, we'll build a big duplex and maybe buy a car. Easy, we have three million. <laughs> Steve, you're so eager. But yes, we should get started on the duplex soon. So, that's the deal. Transfer it to my mom's account right away. Yeah. Please do, Ashley. A wife's money is our money. <laughs> I was utterly shocked by this parent-child duo revealing their true nature. Far from a glimmer of hope, it was beyond imagination. Steve, did you marry me for my inheritance? What, I do love you, but it's you with your inheritance. I started dating you after hearing you were a wealthy lady. When I realized it was more than I expected from a big company, I decided to marry you right away. That's right. I welcomed the marriage too. Steve has always cherished you, hasn't he? Just for my inheritance? Don't look so scared. Once you marry into the husband's family, it's natural to hand over your inheritance. Well, it was lucky he got sick right after getting married. <laughs> I was really surprised. I thought it would be a long time before I hit the jackpot, but he went to heaven so soon. How could you? You were hoping for my father to pass away? I couldn't stop trembling. It's not our fault he got cancer. There's nothing we could do if he's not going to make it. We just prayed for him to find peace soon. Uh, yes, it's better for him to pass on quickly and leave the inheritance to his children than to suffer for a long time. Steve had always treated me well. That's why, when I heard those unbelievable words on the phone, I thought it was a misunderstanding. It was all an act. At that time, a seed of doubt had already been planted in me. I thought it was natural for someone marrying into a wealthy family to be a bit excited and expect some luxury. But this was beyond that. Unforgivable, these heartless people. Holding back my rising anger, I said. First of all, the money hasn't even been deposited into my account yet. It will take about another week for the procedure. I can't transfer it yet. Huh, I thought it was already there. Hurry up, okay? Well, well, but it seems like you understand, Ashley. Smart girl. Once the money comes in, hand it over to me and leave the rest to me. Yeah, I'll give you the account details later. Transfer it immediately. Saying that, my husband, whom I no longer wanted to call my husband, tried to embrace me. I slipped away from Steve's hand and managed to keep my composure. Come again next week. When I said that, Julia left with a got it and a smile. And then the day came. I was going to let this greedy parent-child duo know the full extent of their ugliness. Julia invited herself to my house and sat down, she immediately spoke. Ashley, did the three million come in? Did you transfer it to my account? Let's celebrate with sushi or steak tonight. Oh, that sounds wonderful. With three million coming in, I'll treat you today, Steve. Both were in high spirits. Of course, they thought they were getting three million. Little did they know everything was about to be turned upside down. Then, let me report. I smiled calmly. The renunciation of inheritance has been completed. What? Perfectly in sync, their voices harmonized. Their faces were identical in shock. What did you say? Renunciation of inheritance. Yes, I renounce the inheritance. Stop joking. You wouldn't do such a foolish thing. Exactly. Who in the world would willingly give up three million? Well, normally, yes. People usually renounce inheritance in cases of more debt than assets. Right, it's unthinkable to not inherit when there's no debt. Julia screeched like a banshee. Scary indeed. Oh, you didn't know? It's not that unusual for self-employed inheritors to renounce inheritance. 
to pass on the property to a specific heir for long-term stable management. Decisions for the future, you know. What? How could you? They seemed speechless. Well, of course, these greedy two wouldn't think of giving away money to someone else. In our case, it's my brother who has to take over my father's business so soon. I plan to support him as his sister. But giving away the inheritance is absurd. You're being fooled, Ashley. You're just being used by your brother and his wife. Exactly. The brother's wife, she's just after the money. I said coldly to the panicked pair, don't compare them to you. This was my decision. My brother and his wife said. You don't need to renounce, but, she's a wonderful woman. If they said you don't need to renounce, then rethink it. I already told you, the procedure is complete. I won't receive the three million dollars. Such, such. I have no intention of giving a single dollar to a husband. Who rejoices over the misfortune of his wife's family. Next to her pale-faced husband, my equally pale Julia suddenly looked up. Unbelievable. No inheritance? Steve, divorce her, demand alimony. What? I couldn't help but let out an incredulous exclamation. Of course, it's only right. Steve did nothing wrong, and you renounced the inheritance on your own. Where's the proof that we were after the inheritance or happy about your father's misfortune? We acted perfectly at the wake and the funeral. <laughs> Such a smooth talker. And she just admitted to acting. Proof? You just said it, didn't you? But no one else knows, only you. Stop this foolish renunciation and apologize. Then we won't divorce you. Suddenly, an angry voice echoed in the living room. You're the one who should be apologizing. The calm voice of a man sounded, and surprised Julia froze. Mike. Why are you here? Dad. What? Steve was also shocked. There stood Steve's father, Mike. I made eye contact with my mother, who was behind him, and nodded. You've always been vain. I was happy when Steve married Ashley. But I never thought you were such a person. I couldn't believe it until I heard it with my own ears. Steve, you too. Mike looked genuinely pained. Wah, what? Both Julia and Steve were flustered. You came here last week to talk nonsense about getting Ashley's inheritance. I heard the entire conversation. What? Everything has been recorded, even today's conversation. What, how is that possible? Steve shouted at me. You got flustered several times when I overheard your phone calls. You thought you had fooled me, but I won't be deceived so easily. So, when I heard your mother was coming, I set my phone to record the conversation. Indeed, the day before Julia arrived. I had stopped by my parents' house and consulted with my mother and a lawyer. My mother was shocked, saying, such a thing couldn't be possible. But the reality was much worse. And I decided to renounce the inheritance and started the procedures immediately on Monday. Then I contacted Mike, who was shocked at his wife and son's actions and apologized profusely. I can no longer live with someone like you. You, what are you saying? This is a misunderstanding. Mr. Bradley was humble despite being the president of a large company. I was proud to be his friend and family, but this. I'm deeply ashamed and have no way to apologize. Mike apologized deeply to me. I'm truly sorry, Ashley. You can divorce right away. I won't let her talk nonsense about compensation or anything. Hey, Dad quiet. Don't open your mouth any further, you shameless man. If you have complaints, let's show today's and last week's recordings to your workplace and all our relatives. Ugh. Ah. Mike took the cool moment at the end. But that's okay. 
When I talked to him with my mother, Mike wept, truly sorry for what happened to my father. Steve and Julia, speechless, gaping, I said to them. That's the situation. Please leave. A month later. Steve and I were divorced. The news spread from the couple who introduced us. And Steve soon found himself without friends. He was reportedly transferred to a small sales office far away. Steve's parents also divorced. Julia, who had freely spent her husband's money on luxury goods and dining out, had no choice but to agree to the divorce when she couldn't repay what she had spent. Can't she say she'll work part-time and not divorce? I wondered. Her refusal to change and reconcile with her husband showed her true nature. Well, it's no longer my concern. Mike came to our house to apologize again. Asking to visit my father's grave at least on the anniversary of his death. My mother and I, of course, agreed. The inheritance I renounced is being used as capital for the company. My mother, brother, and even my younger brother offered to redistribute their shares to me. Having such a family is more than enough. Dad, I wasn't wrong, was I? Having moved out of the apartment I shared with Steve and returned to my parents' home. I spoke to my father's portrait. It seemed as if he smiled back in the photo, and tears fell from my eyes.